Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A court rules that New York State's government officials cannot punish Christian adoption agencies, thank God. We interview Pastor Jim Garlow of Wellversed Ministries in Washington, D.C., and Dr. Rick Scarborough teaches you how to vote with the Jonathan Project. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A court has ruled in New York State that the government officials there cannot punish Christian adoption agencies for refusing to turn over their children to homosexual couples. One News Now reports that New Hope Family Services, a Christian agency, has been in and out of courtrooms ever since the New York State Office of Children and Family Services threatened to force them and their Syracuse-based nonprofit Christian agency to drop all adoption services because it only places children in homes that include one man and one woman, a married mother and father. Well, New York State was going to discriminate against the Christians for doing that, but New Hope fought back and filed a federal court only lawsuit, and they watched its lawsuit at first get tossed out. But then came the appeal. In July, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals reversed the lower court's dismissal, and now the court has ruled the state cannot stop Christian adoption agencies from giving kids to one man and one woman. They've issued a temporary injunction while the lawsuit continues to work its way through the courts, but Roger Brooks, who is an attorney with Alliance Defending Freedom, called the court ruling great news for children who need to be adopted and for the parents working with New Hope to place those children in loving, stable homes. Attorney Brooks says the following, quote, government officials have no business forcing faith-based providers to choose between speaking messages about marriage that contradict their religious convictions or closing their doors, end quote. That's literally what New York was gonna force the Christians to do is go out of business. Responding to the ongoing legal fight, attorney radio host Abraham Hamilton says that the lower court tossed the case on the false premise that New York or New Hope Ministries was wasting the court's time. Hamilton's analysis of the case is as follows. He said, quote, and the Second Circuit said, excuse me, the law clearly has some religious animus, in other words, hostility, and you can't just dismiss their claim, so we're sending it back down to you to take the claim seriously because there are serious issues indicated by the record that shows the only thing that motivated the state of New York was its anti-Christian hostility, end quote. Hamilton is a former prosecutor, serves as general counsel for the Mississippi-based American Family Association. And according to attorney Brooks, there is a huge need for adoption services in the state of New York, and he insists the faith-based agency is not interfering with the other agencies that might hold different views on what is best for children. He says the following, this is uh, Attorney Brooks, he said, quote, this ruling signals that the state's attempt to shutter New Hope violated core right principles protected by the First Amendment, the freedom to speak what you believe and the freedom to practice the teachings of your faith, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to One News Now for that report. I wanna take a moment and uh, analyze this for a couple of very personal reasons, right? First of all, I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. I may have been affected by decisions like this, this court case that's happening because I was born in 1968 to a single mom who gave me up for adoption. And I went through 
one of those adoption agencies, just like the one that you're, they're talking about now. Just like New Hope Ministries is, is now suing to get freedom, why? So that they can place the kids with one mom and one dad. Any other form of adoption, whatever your views of, of gay marriage and homosexuality, let's set those aside. Any other form of adoption deprives a child like me of one man and one woman, a mom or a dad. You're gonna take away a mom from a little kid who would otherwise be adopted into a mom and dad kind of situation. You're gonna take away that kid's mom. That's child abuse. And New Hope is doing something about it. They're loving these kids. Did you know that for every child who is uh, adopted, there are 10 more couples on a waiting list hoping to adopt? There's a long line. Did you know for every child that is aborted, um, for the sake of convenience, nine out of 10 children are aborted just for the convenience, not because of any health issues or anything like that. There's such a disparity and thank God, we discern the spirit of God upon New Hope Ministries who are loving these children enough to put them in loving homes. And we're excited about that. And we're excited that the second court of appeals got it right and decided to rule in favor of not just uh, religious freedom, but in favor of the children. Let's pray for those children right now. Would you take a moment and pray with me? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to bless the children. Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. And Father, we ask that you would protect every child, especially those who are in danger, who are stuck in government family services programs or, or, or needing a mother and a father. Father, we pray that they would quickly be united with their new mom and dad. We pray that ministries all over New York State would stand up, the church would stand up and take charge of serving these children. As James 1 says, we're supposed to care for widows and orphans. In fact, uh, we have a scripture here, Matthew 18. I wanna read this. Whoever causes one of these little ones to sin, who believe in me to sin, Jesus said, it'd be better for a millstone be hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Father, we pray against those who would harm children. Father, we pray that they would also repent so that your mercy could apply even to our enemies. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna have important interviews with Pastor Jim Garlow gave up a mega church in California to move to Washington DC so he can get active in Christian ministries to elected officials. Also, Dr. Rick Scarborough, a longtime friend of mine with the Jonathan Project, will encourage you why you should vote. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years. But now, there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. Prayinjesusname.org is our website, or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? so that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, 
especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news, we need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-ObeyGod, and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. Call us right now, and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're here at The Return in Washington, D.C. This is Pastor Jim Garlow, and uh, you came all the way from? San Diego. Well, what is happening in San Diego that you had to leave there to come to Washington, D.C.? <laughs> There's a lot happening in California right now. Some of it's not good. Right. And we got a legislature that's the most horribly liberal legislative body in the history of Western civilization. Yeah. Strong statement to make. Yeah. But we they just decided now that uh, a 24-year-old man having sex with a 14-year-old boy, that's that's a good thing. Well, I saw there was a, an openly gay senator who ran that bill, and it yeah. eased the restrictions so that judges don't have to put them on a sex offender list yes. if they're molesting a, a child? Yeah, you can be a sex offender, you just don't have to register as one anymore. That's wow. California. While our uh, churches, pastors are being threatened, one church's uh, fines are up to $52,750 for doing what? For having services. Another one's being threatened with jail. Uh, numbers of them being threatened right now uh, by, our, by our governor, uh, but he signed into a bill, uh, a, a state, uh, I mean a law, that uh, reduces any kind of a sentence for pedophilia. That's what we're facing in our state. We need, I, we need God. With, with regard to freedom of worship for churches in California, you're, you're following uh, yeah. Dr. John MacArthur and his church. Yeah. What's, what's the latest that you know, and what's the, what is the governor of California doing? Well, he just won a case. I'm not conversant on it. That just came through. I actually read that today, yeah. and I'm not conversant with the intricacy of the case. I'm always a little cautious because sometimes they'll say, oh, you won a case, but you look into the fine print and it wasn't as good as it sounds. Okay. I'm hoping this one is better than the last one that reports like that came. So hopefully it's good news he, he did win a case. But th th there are churches that are simply all over the state not being allowed to open. The governor's saying, fine, you can meet outside. We had a heat wave in our area of San Diego, eastern part of the county of San Diego, of 115 on a recent weekend. We never have temperatures like that. They expected us to meet outside. Uh, and you can imagine what that would be like, particularly for older people, even for children as well. <laughs> Unrealistic, even in an auditorium, the, the church that I built there, I'm not pastoring currently, that's pastored by my uh, successor, but it is a 2,000 seat auditorium. They were allowed to have more than 100 people in there or even that. Uh, that's, how, that's how bizarre it is. You can go to Costco and you can get on a plane. I flew here on a plane where the person in front of me was you know, 18 inches away from me or so. <clears throat> but uh, you, we're not allowed to worship. Meanwhile, anyone can shop in Walmart and anyone could go gamble in Las Vegas and it's just a uh, double standard. In Las Vegas is even, even worse because the casino can be at 50% capacity, but a church can't be at 50% capacity based upon the Calvary Chapel Dayton Valley ruling that came out, I think around July 25th or so. That ruling was churches cannot have more than 50. Now a casino can have 50%. And uh, so a, a recent uh, Evangelicals for Trump rally was moved into a hotel. Uh, the room seated 1,600. So by law in the casino, you should have 800. Yeah. They had 800, uh, but the authorities shut it down because the Evangelicals for Trump rally had at the beginning three praise songs. Therefore, they declared it was a church, no longer a casino, and you can only have 50 people. The governor of the state, the mayor of Las Vegas, the attorney general of the state, at 4.47 p.m., started at 5 p.m., sent a notification, sent the, sh uh, the police over and said, you gotta shut this thing down. <clears throat> now, fortunately, they did not. The police did not even want to shut it down, and they went through with it. So what did they do the next day? Notified the owner, this is uh, the Ahern, Ahern Hotel, Don Ahern, the owner, notified him they're shutting down the hotel, and they closed him down. So you've escaped California for the moment. You're here in Washington, D.C. Why, what is the return? Well, first of all, we have a ministry here in D.C. So we're, we live in San Diego, but we're, we're in D.C. most of the time pre-COVID. Yeah. We have a weekly Bible study. Our ministry is called Well Versed. We have a weekly Bible study at the at the White uh, the uh, Congress, so right ahead of us there at the Capitol building. And then we have uh, weekly Bible studies at the United Nations in New York City, and we meet privately with ambassadors there. And then we have an occasional Bible study we co-sponsor with uh, some Jewish rabbis in the Knesset of Jews and Christians studying the Tanakh. Uh, together. We meet with government officials, and if I can give a plug, wellversedworld.org is, is the yeah. website. But we're here to, to return because Kevin Jessup and 
Jonathan Kahn, good friends, long-term good friends, have declared our nation to something we need to do, and it's a day of repentance. Yeah. <clears throat> and Kevin's been making the case, he's worked on this for seven years, and he's made the case, it's not a case of just prayer, it's a case of a day of repentance. Yeah. Uh, that's a different thing uh, to say that. So I've got to hand it to him, this is what we have gathered for as believers. We're not coming here on the issue of, for example, let's say abortion, to criticize the spineless judges or weak-kneed legislators who have created a horrible problem of killing babies in the womb, we're in a sense repenting on the part of the church that the church could tolerate such a thing to even have happened and started and for it to continue uh, this long. So it is a day of repentance. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of it with you. Uh, would you lead our audience in a word of prayer? Father, we come to you as followers of Jesus that knowing we haven't measured up to that standard in so many ways and we repent of that. We want to be like Jesus in every respect with the boldness and the courage, yet the tenderness and the grace. So teach us to move in both grace and truth, grace first and then truth latter. Uh, and Lord, as we, as we reflect on us as the church of Jesus Christ, we repent of our failures, our sins, our spinelessness, our times where we said too much and didn't say it right, and our times we were silent when we should have vocalized the truth. So may we be infused and filled with your spirit in such a way we truly are the church of Jesus Christ. We long to reflect you and be you in the culture. And we pray for an outbreak of a, of a revival, a spiritual renewal, first in our own hearts, the church at large, and, and then to splatter across this nation in inexplicable ways. And when it happens, only you can get the glory for what takes place. We pray this in the mighty name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, amen. 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 Pastor Jim Garlow has a church in California uh, and also a ministry here in Washington, D.C. What was that website you mentioned again? Wellversedworld.org. Now, I've been pastoring my whole life until just uh, two years ago. Stepped out of that so I could be full-time here at the Capitol, New York City at the United Nations. We've met with 93 of the 193 ambassadors there. And then we have we meet with heads of state in every country we, where God opens the doors. So we've been meeting with members of parliament or Congress or heads of state in various countries to try to bring biblical principles of governance to governmental leaders. Amen. I love it. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back at The Return in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman Congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. We need to stand with our friends in Israel, and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem. Stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand. Visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps. Many of you have visited our online bookstore when you go to our website, PrayInJesusName.org. I'm letting you know, especially as a thank you to our faithful givers, that we now have a flash sale this month only where all of our products are 50% off. Let me show you an example. In fact, we're gonna to bundle together four of our best-selling DVDs, starting out with prayer. This is a spiritual growth pack, but the, the first stage in spiritual growth is how can I have an effective prayer life? And then, for those of you living at home with your family, of course, marriage. God's word on marriage so you can have a great foundation with your family. We're living in unreal times, which is why we're putting in the Unreal Christianity series with Vince Dacchioli as part of our spiritual growth pack. And finally, how to become an effective Christian activist. After you have the foundation, this is how you expand and change your world. Each of these four DVDs, would normally sell for $30 each. That's $120 value. We're giving it to you now for half price, $60. If you call us right now at 866-Obey-God, again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, 
leave a message or operators are standing by to take your credit card and we'll throw in shipping at no cost. We'll pay the shipping. We want you to have this spiritual growth pack, all four DVDs. This is a flash sale. You can also get it through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore. The bookstore, by, now, by the way, now has 50% off on all products, including some of my books and other things we're not mentioning. But call us now and get the Spiritual Growth Pack, four DVDs for just $60. We throw in the shipping. Call us right now for this special offer at 866-Obey-God. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps at the National Day of Prayer and Repentance called The Return in Washington, D.C. My dear friend, a mentor of mine who uh, has been a respe respected advisor of my ministry since I knew him over a decade ago, Dr. Rick Scarborough is now, uh, tell me your title again with the Jonathan Project. I'm the National Pastor Advisor for the Jonathan Project. So you advise pastors or you are one? I am one and I, I've reached the age in life where they think I might have some advice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What does the Jonathan Project do? It's uh, strictly a, a nonpartisan voter registration operation. We strive to register as many Christians as we can to vote their values on election day. Now how does that work? You have a, you have a strategy for getting unregistered Christians or non-voting Christians? Well, you know, we we register any Christian that, that we happen to uh, encounter through the method of geofencing. Uh, uh, it's a, that's a technical term that's used in the computer world, uh, much uh, of which I don't fully understand. But we throw a geofence around churches that cooperate with us, and we can ascertain by doing an historical geofence who in that church has been attending over time who is not registered. And then we direct all of our attention on getting those unregistered Christians registered because statistics bear out that a newly registered uh, voter, whether Christian or non-Christian, is much more likely to vote than someone who's been registered for years. And so by registering new voters, we can make a dramatic difference on elections, which is what we're all about. Uh, our desire is to, is to impact our country for the glory of God, to advance the kingdom. And while we're nonpartisan, our prayer by the selection of churches that we uh, throw geofences around is that we'll impact uh, voters who love God and have values that we believe reflect that love and consequently with a little bit of uh, information in their hands we'll vote for candidates who reflect those values. Now I heard this is a few years ago and I may get it wrong but there was a shocking study that less than half of church voters, church attenders actually vote. Well, it's much worse than that. I, that would be a, a great improvement. Only about half of those who attend church, chaps, are registered. And of those who are registered in a presidential election, right at half of those, which means 75% of those who could vote aren't voting. Uh, a lot of them because they're not even registered. But when you get in an off-year election, uh, like two years from now, when there's not a presidential race driving uh, the media, it drops down to 8, 10, 12%. Oh I've often said, and I've devoted my entire adult life in trying to teach pastors and churches what a difference they could make if they just voted. Uh, I will be addressing the, the return tonight, and one of my main focuses in the brief time I have is Isaiah chapter 3, where it talks about apathy. It talks about, first of all, uh, babes ruling over men, and by that, what the author was telling us is people with no core values. But on the other side of that is those who have the values, who could make a difference, don't participate. They basically take the position, it won't matter, it won't count, who cares? And that's what's killing freedom in America. We're gonna lose our freedoms. We don't change that attitude among Christians. So that apathy could have grave consequences on uh, the upcoming election. I'm not talking about Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Even the undercard races where congressmen are up or, or local county commissioners are up. We need Christians to run for office. You have a history of mobilizing new candidates as well. That's correct. And, and what I would say to your audience who love you, uh, what a difference you made in Colorado when you were in office. And the only reason you're not in office is because not enough Christians are voting. So <laughs> the only way to get the, the godly men and women who could shape this nation after the, the 
picture that our founders uh, set forth for us are people who share those values, and that's the Christians, those who watch your television program. So I would say to all of you, make sure you're registered. It is a sin for a Christian not to be registered and not to vote. You say, where's that verse? He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. That's right out of the Bible. If you know better and you know you should be voting, right. but you stay home and say, oh, I'm apathetic, that's for somebody else, that's a sin. You're gonna have to answer maybe someday to God. But we're here as a day of prayer and repentance. What is a, a humble act of repentance for a common Christian at home to do, in your opinion? Well, I would say engage. You know, prayer must be followed by works. Uh, the Bible says faith without works is a dead faith. And so what I believe is an, an outward demonstration of an inward repentance is that we make a change. So I'm going to be Johnny One Note today. If you haven't been voting, vote. Because this election, unlike any other, is going to impact our country for decades. For the, the next president is going to nominate, if it's not done before the election, the next Supreme Court justice. And even if that current uh, appointment is fulfilled by election day, uh, there will be other appointments at federal court levels up and down the line. The way the left has stolen our country from us has not been at the ballot box. I still think there's a moral majority, like yeah. Dr. Falwell used to often say, but the reality is the majority aren't participating. So um, I think participate. you're, you're on to that. Would you lead our audience in a word of prayer? I'd be glad to. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your anointing upon each person that's watching and listening to this, to these few remarks. And Lord, I pray you'd move the church, those who love you, to get up and get busy by voting their values on election day. And I pray that in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. Is there a website for the Jonathan Project? How can people, what do you want people to do? Jonathanproject.org is our website. If they'd like to get in touch with me about more information of how they can uh, access our, what we offer, They'll find there in the first place a plethora of, of information about what they should do and how to get educated to vote values. There's preaching materials and teaching materials. But if they want to know more, they can get in touch with me at rs at jonathanproject.org. rs for Rick Scarborough at jonathanproject.org. That's it, jonathanproject.org. Make sure you are registered to vote. This is a pastor, mentor, and a friend of mine for a long time, Dr. Rick Scarborough. Thank you, sir, for coming right. on the program. Thank you. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate or contribute if you can. Pl click on the Recurring Monthly Pledge Sponsor button to help us bring you these important programs, TV news stories, and interviews. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.